Welcome back to KK's Quilt Studio. The creators of Art & Stitch are always looking for opportunities and ways that they can improve our experience with Art & Stitch Base and Plus. Earlier this month, they announced that there was a new update available, version 5. Version 5 has lots of features for Art & Stitch Base and or Art and Stitch Plus users. So let's move on over to Art and Stitch and get, take a look at some of the new features that have been added. When you open Art and Stitch, it doesn't look much different than it did before, but believe me, there have been some changes and improvements. You'll notice that when you after you install an update, your now your screen now reads Art and Stitch 5.0. So this is one of the new features. Under the menu, there have been a couple things. The ruler is now called the measure tool. And if we go up under tools and our preferences, look under options, you'll see that now English inches has been changed to Imperial and that has been a um, update to terminology in a lot of programs. So now we have the choice of either using Imperial or metric measurements. Metric can come in handy when you're using Art and Stitch Plus for the embroidery side. Also in the properties screen there have been some improvements and you'll notice as we move through here, um, you'll be able, this, this screen tends to fill up with lots of choices and exceptions. And before the apply button wanted to move down here, sometimes down below where we could access it. So once we made changes to the artwork on our screen, we weren't able to uh, find or click the apply button to make those changes. So that has been upgraded to better meet our functional functionality. Also, you'll notice down here, and we're going to use this later, there has been an extra uh, design color bar added. So you'll see when we're using um, several colors in our plus side, they will all appear up here. So if you want to go back to a particular color to use it again, you have easy access to it here. And like I said, we'll, we will see that when we move on to uh, a later feature. First, we're going to talk about motifs. This is a satin heart motif that I designed and I've applied it to a line. This is what I was getting um, prior to the update, um, my little hearts seem kind of fluttery, don't they? It look like they're they're having a little little bit of problem. Well, that has to do with the long stitches, and when I applied that, I couldn't get rid of all those little waves. So, if I were to apply that to a closed shape, I've drawn. A circle with my shapes tool down here click on the motif and of course we get that 201 is the default now you won't have this one because this is one that I've created and if I go down the list if you've created any motifs you'll find that they are in purple and I have some classes on how to create your own motifs this is mine I put all my designs to start with a KK so I know that they're mine and then we click apply and you'll see now my hearts have that little fluttering well it it could be okay it could be something that you like you want that <clears throat> inner little outline of a heart but now they've added in ignore stitch length so I'm going to get nice smooth satin hearts just like the line above and there they are so that is an improvement i like this ignore stitch link because sometimes in embroidery you want the program to ignore um, i know it's going to be a large jump you don't have to give me a warning sign or do something funky like that i want smooth satin hearts 
Next is more for um, the base side, the quilters. This is a picture of our previous toolbar. And if I click on one of these to light up, this is the second toolbar. And you'll see here that I don't have this third button. This was a apply crosshatch fill. And we can still do a crosshatch. So if I were to draw a circle as here, and I'm using it more as a creative fill, if I go under the library tool, bring that up, and in my creative fills, I already have a crosshatch fill. There's kind of a curved crosshatch fill and a straight crosshatch fill. So you would bring that in as you normally do, put a shape in front of it. Okay, we'll go to our sequence view. You see I have both of them. If I hold down the control key and select both, And you'll see now my creative fill button lights up. So I click on that and there I have a crosshatch fill. So it was kind of redundant before. Now we're more organized as to where our fills are. Next is the uh, another button that has been applied. If I were to use that same circle and add in a motif fill. Let's draw a new one. And I'm going to put in motif fill. I get that default. We'll go to our properties screen. We get that default 211 pattern. If I were to go up, you'll see that there are more and there is a plain old straight line. If I click on that and apply, you'll see that I get a straight line fill. Well, how did I get that wavy one? This is the new button, a stitch type. Now we have a drop down menu to do either a straight or a wave. Don't forget to click apply. And now you'll see I have that same wavy texture to my fill. And if I were to go up to the reshape tool, now you'll see my line of inclination, that pink or purple line that runs through it. I can change that. So if I click, drag, hold down my left click key, don't forget to click apply, or enter on your keyboard, I can change the wave. until I get the effect that I like. So that's the same way that I got this one. Remember, I used a motif fill, but I used the line pattern. Next tool is something that we had a discussion on. I did some videos on a echo fill. So I have two pieces of artwork, the circle and the rounded square, and I want to do an echo around that circle but within the square. So maybe you had an applique uh, shape in a block and you this would be the applique and the square symbolizes our square. Remember we selected both items. Right click, go to transform artwork and we want to exclude now I have one piece of artwork. I'll select the artwork and I will go to echo fill. Remember this is the button, not these down here. These are different. We want to go to the echo fill to fill that square around the circle. Before this suddenly became artwork in the old version, now, if I go to my reshape tool and click on that echo boundary, you'll see that this is indeed edit editable. Um, I can edit it so I can grab that 
point here and bring it around. I can reshape and play with these tools so I can make that echo look like it's coming out from the circle. I can reshape this. I can now work with this rather than it be having stitches assigned. Feature for Arden Stitch Plus. I have two shapes here. I created these shapes, stored them in my uh, library under my shapes folder. I want to turn these into applique. So I'm going to select both items, click on applique, and you'll see when I open or expand the tree that I indeed have two pieces of artwork. Now if you understand applique, applique is a position stitch, a, a, a placement, a tack down, and then the final zigzag. So there are three separate stitches for both of these and you want to have stops for all of them. So I can't change anything here because these are all one piece under the applique. Now I have the choice of reassigning. So if I get right over the applique, right click, I have a new choice in my menu called Breakup Applique. And again, I'll do it on my moon. Right click, Breakup Applique. And now, remember, I was going to tell, explain about the design colors. You'll see that I have three design colors. If I click on this one, I have two satin stitches. But which one is my applique and which one is my tack down? That one with the um, more space between the zigzags is my tack down. So I pulled it aside. But all I have to do is go back, undo, to put it back in place. So this is my second step. So I want to make that one green. And it's green. My outside or final satin stitch, I want to change to orange. And you'll see what I'm doing here in a minute. I'm going to expand all of these to show what I've got. Again, I have a satin and I just want to move it over to verify that that is indeed my placement. So the placement is going to be green. And now I have a run and a run for both shapes, a tack down and the final satin stitch. So I've assigned three different colors. Now all I need to do is bring my moon and I'm left clicking and dragging it into place so that my sewing machine will know. I have two runs which is going to show me where to place my star, my moon, my, my fabric. So it's going to do my placement stitches. After I have the fabric in place, then it's going to do the tack down satin stitch or zigzag. And then now my star and my moon will do my final satin stitch. So I've created, when I have more than uh, one applique in the same file, I've created more of an orderly fashion to my applique. So that's why I love having my design colors. I don't have to go along the scroll bar here and find which three colors I was using. The next feature is align points. Here we may be back to Art and Stitch Base or Plus. Um, I don't know where I would use this feature, but I will probably be at, run across some way I can use this. I, I don't know how yet. But I, I do like it. It's a handy little tool. So I'm in, on my reshape tool. I'm going to select dry box. I'm holding down my left mouse key, clicking and release. 
And now you see my alignment tools line up. So if I wanted to align all those dots to the left, to the right, to the top or to the bottom, let's align them to the right. You'll see, I get a nice straight line of dots. That's pretty cool. Here's one more neat feature. I drew an ellipse and I was able to rotate them all coming to this center point. Now when you click on a ellipse or any other shape and use your rotation box, one of these blue circles here in either corner, and rotate, you'll see that my ellipse is rotating on that center X. What if I want it to rotate down here? Well, now if you click on this center point and click on, hold down the Alt key on your keyboard, you can move this anywhere you want. I'm going to move it to the bottom. I'm going to copy, paste, paste. And now when I rotate it, my design rotates on that center X rather than in the middle. So I can keep all my center points together. Isn't that a cool feature? I love this new rotation point because there's often a time that I want to move that somewhere else and not rotate in the middle. So I hope you've enjoyed all the new features and exploring the new tools that are available. The program itself has been updated. So if you have an older computer, um, follow the guidelines. I mean, this is a really old. If you've got a computer from um, 2006 or before, you've had that computer for a long time and it's probably a good time to place a new computer on your uh, Santa gift list uh, before that computer dies or just isn't uh, usable for you anymore. Uh, so Art & Stitch has been updated to come up with the latest uh, operating system features um, and that is always an improvement. So I, I like these new features. I hope you like them. Tell me what your favorite feature is. I'd love to hear from you and see what you're going to do with your new tools. So until we meet next time, I wish you happy quilting. Don't forget to contact me through any of the social media groups, become a member of my Facebook group, subscribe to the CTube YouTube channel, click right down below, and you can find more of my classes and tutorials on my website, kksquiltstudio.com. Drop me an email if you've got any questions, concerns, or suggestions for a new video. Thanks again for joining me. Bye for now.